<laughs> hey, welcome to the return of Farm Talk Friday. I am Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Giovanna. Hi, baby. Hi, Angela. You look wonderful today. Oh. As always. Uh, okay, it is uh, Friday the 13th, October 13th, 2023, and we're in October. Scary, scary. No, no, it's Freya's scary. day. Freya. Goddess Freya. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Goddess of Love. Okay, so we've been away. Um, been doing lots of things. Uh, we did go to Las Vegas for a couple of weeks. Uh, I am wearing my Las Vegas triathlon t-shirt. It's a pretty cool t-shirt. Pretty cool for... t-shirt. I got like a little finisher metal with the same skull is kind of cool um i got second place uh i did on my run i ran way past the turnaround spot because i didn't see the sign i don't know i lost like seven or eight minutes i lost first place by like six minutes maybe i could have won i'm not sure but anyway it was just a lot of fun to do a triathlon in my hometown and, uh, yeah, so, um, anyway, moving on, yeah? Moving on, okay. Yeah. Ken met a new friend, he was really nice. Him and his significant other were from L.A., so. But his family was from Costa Rica. Yeah, that's right. And by the that way, it's good. a beautiful day in Costa Rica, look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is super beautiful. Yeah, it's been raining a lot, but it's super nice right now. Okay, what do you got? Well, what I've got are green eggs. That's right. So, he so is back on fire. Yeah, we have green eggs. That means our prize egg laying hen, Guy, is back in business. That's we right. are so happy. And all of those are since we've gotten back. Plus, we've had, like, Ken's been making waffles in the mornings. We've been using eggs. So, she's been. Yeah. Not every day, but most days she's laying. Yes. And she's kind of like our only layer right now. <laughs> yeah. So we did get this really special egg a few days ago. It was lavender. Like, uh -huh. we've, we have no idea who laid the egg. Did I use it? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I said, Ken, did you save the, the lavender egg for Farm Talk Friday? And he said... I don't know. I might have just used that. <laughs> so that's okay. Made the waffles extra delicious, I'm sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, should we give the news? No. No. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, also, um, we are prepping for Rosa de Jamaica season. Mm -hmm. We're prepping for the harvest. Uh, Rosa de Jamaica are these... Um, it's one of the only annuals we like to grow here. Um, these are the fruits of the labor. Well, you the can see. The rosettes. Yeah, the calyx. And they're delicious. Calyxes. And, um, yeah, they're great. They taste similar to maybe like cranberry, but cranberry is actually like the most sour, tart thing in the world. These are way sweeter. These have way more vitamin Although they're still very tart. Yeah. <laughs> These have way more vitamin C than orange juice. Um, they're just great. And um, it's uh, one of our main crops. Yeah. That we grow every year. So I was checking on what we've got planted and we did not have nearly enough. So we're like planting at least like 30 more. Um, so we can have a good crop. This is still from a couple of years ago, from our bumper crop from a couple of years ago. Last year was not so great. Um, it was not so great, but we still got some. Yeah. And so we're this, still in abundance. This is the tea that uh, we make from it. Mm -hmm. um, not Kool-Aid. Not Kool-Aid. And uh, so we got that going on. Um, okay, uh, honey, tell me about the blue button. The blue button takeover. Tell, tell me about the blue button takeover. <laughs> okay. So I... Um, I haven't been outside a lot, actually. Um, well, yeah. So uh, it does 
uh, do amazing things for my skin as well, but I actually had an issue a few years ago and I had to have something like cut out of my skin and so I have to get lasering and so my skin's super sensitive. So anyway, I've only been able to kind of go outside once. I've been hiding for like two weeks. Anyway, um, there's lots of things that like I do and when I'm not doing them, it's noticeable. Yes. And, um, and one of those would be like maintaining certain gardens. And so the fairy garden has this like blue button takeover. And the blue buttons are just flowers, they're decorative, and they're really pretty. But I had first put them in one part of the garden. They actually didn't do that well. And they started growing on their own, like across the garden. And now they have taken over, you know that, um, so there was like this piece of wood that somehow like we made into like a table and little fairy stools. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's grown over cool. like half of it. Yeah, it looks kind of pretty. Um, so I might leave it there for a while until I think I'm having a tea party, but, but uh, it just, it's so amazing like how just a few feet away something could be thriving. You know, <laughs> like well, what's wrong with that spot over there? You know? It's the magic of sun and shade spots. I yeah, guess. but I, you know, but there's nothing that I can perceive uh -huh. of like, so it must be like a water thing. Yeah. Maybe. I that. mean, I just, I, I'm like, well, I just don't, based on light, I don't understand like why it doesn't like one spot versus the other. Anyway, so that's a blue button takeover. And then, um, how are we doing on our papaya? Well, yeah. How many did we plant? Well, we planted lots. I was trying to, oh, we've had such a hard time with papaya. Um, there was one time like when we had like 20 of them growing, mm -hmm. they're all in a row, and then so quickly, half or more had the shrunken head syndrome. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, you know that they're just not going to ever produce um, and then I don't know what happened to the rest of them. They just all died, like but those we, guys. We've got a lot started, right? We had a lot started, and then I planted some, you know, out. I don't, I don't know. I'm thinking that probably most of them got eaten by iguanas, but I, I protected some in our main garden. I wanted to see them grow in our main garden so we could watch them more. And we've returned from the trip and I've checked on them and we have like two out of like six or eight that I planted. All right, you know? we, we, gotta, we gotta plant 40 more. We got two. We gotta plant 40 more. <laughs> yeah, so actually I had Adriana, I handed her probably like hundreds of seeds and said, hey, let's get these started. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for planting those, Adri. And um, today we had... Um, a uh, delicious salad for lunch that yes. included our katuk. Yes. So I was here at the Green Wave House studios earlier. And on my way here, I like ran into some katuk that was in the pathway. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, you should be at part of our lunch later. Yeah. So on the way there, Ken has this style. So the katuk, it's like, it's long. Like it's almost, it can grow kind of, kind of like viney sometimes. And um, Ken has this style where he'll hold part of it and then he'll just like, how would you say that? Like xylophoning it or? Um, yeah, you just you slide down. Slide You, you let, let the stem stay there <laughs> and you get all the leaves off in your hand. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how I had this thing earlier, but. Um, so yeah, I did Ken's like slide technique and I used sesame oil, a little bit of salt, and then like tahini. It was like all about sesame. It was delicious. It was super good. Yeah, highly recommend. So any of our friends that are growing katuk, um, we got someone putting a thumbs down. Did you mean to put a thumbs up, Mark? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah, katuk and tahini. Um, is our recommendation. And then, oh yeah. So in other updates, um, Green Wave updates, 
Well, Futuro Verde is having a fundraiser tomorrow at Aves. So if you're in our area, I think it goes three to 10. And so that's raising mm -hmm. money for the school. So that's cool. And then tomorrow, our little community, community of Las Delicias is having a celebration of cultures, different oh, cultures. Oh, yes. And what so, are you doing this year? Well, I'll be at a table <laughs> and I'll be presenting the blues. So oh, I'll be, I'll be okay. representing the United States and I'll be presenting the blues, the history of the blues, uh, where it comes from. And uh, that should be fun. And that's yeah. from like three to nine tomorrow in the Salon Comunal of Las Delicias. Yeah. So tomorrow is like pre-gaming for Shiro Fest, which starts the next day. Mm -hmm. And so Ken and I are actually going in the morning to the Montezuma River um, for sun salutations and like an ancestral um, blessing with the water. Do you want to talk a little about uh, Shiro Fest? Yeah, in a moment. Okay. Uh, but my whole point is I'm going to miss Ken's presentation because um, from two to five, I'm doing a prostration uh, practice and I'll be teaching like the Cheryl Fest um, spiritual challenge if you will so yeah anyways Shiro Fest um, is something I started back in March and I'm gonna do it twice a year and it aligns Masarmenos with um, a celebration for Durga um, who is uh, considered a supreme goddess in the Indian some Indian traditions and um, so her celebration there is called uh, Navratri or Navaratri, and yeah, so it's, All right. it's exciting. So anyways, tomorrow's pregame, <laughs> the pre-events <laughs> for Shiro Fest. And then the next day we'll have um, a Tiny Temples for Debbie tree consecration in Santa Teresa. Uh, if you want more details about that, you have to join the Shiro Fest um, WhatsApp group. I can leave a link at the bottom or, or share it later. And then Tea Room at 3 p.m. in Playa Hermosa. And honey, while we were in Vegas, did you find uh, anybody practicing permaculture? Okay, so yeah. Well, I don't know if, like I found, okay. I cr created, while we were there, um, a Las Vegas slash Nevada permaculture guide. Mm -hmm. So there's a separate website. I'll leave that in the links too. And uh, if you put your email in, then you get the, the guide right away. Um, so if you live in Nevada, um, you know, share it with, with friends. But yeah, there's actually a lot of resources, a lot of inspiring um, things happening there that you wouldn't think maybe. And uh, and there's one guy, I don't think he's, he's not really practicing permaculture necessarily, but he's practicing organic gardening and, um, and urban gardening. So I forget what his name is, but it's in the guide. So you All can right. check him out by signing up and getting that guide. Okay. And now, uh, should we talk about butterscotch? Yeah. Okay. We're going to end this on, um, well, Just maybe we can end it on an uplifting note. But... Some sad news. Our most beautiful hen, um, butterscotch has left us for another dimension. Yeah. And of course oh, it gosh. happened while we were out of town. <laughs> yeah, of course. All of our hens die while we're out of town. Yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I'm really glad I didn't zoom in. We had our worker like send me a picture. I was like, I don't know if I needed that. But like, yeah. But, um, but I had, I had told you that mm -hmm. I thought that she was kind of towards her end. She was doing some weird stuff. Like Ken's mom was still here and uh, I went to go check on the girls and she has been picked on, I guess ever since Elaine died, their, their weird sister. Um, then she became the one that Pecan and Crema were kind of, especially Pecan. Pecan was kind of mean to her. So this one day, I see them and they're sitting down. Pecan's actually sitting with her, like, hey, I'm here with you, sister. I'm like, well, that's weird. Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking at Butterscotch and her eyes are like, you know, like yeah. rolling and closing and 
looking at her. I'm like, girl, are you okay? Like, what's happening here? Are you dying? Like, your sisters are sitting with you? And, and she basically wasn't going up at night into her predict protected house. Yeah, so I, I think it was just her time, and she, you know, coyotes got her, but or, it's... Or foxes. Right. One of the two. One of the two. Um, our, our workers said uh, foxes initially, and then he changed the story to coyotes, so we don't really know, but, um, and it doesn't matter, um, yeah. but she, I just think that she kind of, she needed to go, and so she called it in, I, I, I see it happen with trees sometimes. I think like um, when plants aren't doing well, it's almost like they call in a disease to help them go. So, um, so yeah, so she went, she's buried. She's not buried where I instructed her to get buried, <laughs> but that's okay. But I came home from Vegas with a stone to um, bury with her. All right. And so we'll have a little ceremony and hopefully an update the next Farm Talk Friday on that. All right. Well, hope to see you next week on Farm Talk Friday. And ciao from our little friend. It'll Cosmo. be either on my page or Giovanna's page or here on the Green Wave House page. So thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Ciao.